Hey third grade, it's Miss Williamson. Today we're going to be reviewing all the science that we've learned recently because we're going to have a test tomorrow. So we're going to be reviewing the five habitats of Georgia and adaptations of plants and animals that we have in Georgia. So the five habitats that we have in Georgia are the mountain habitat, the Piedmont habitat, coastal plains habitat, marsh and swamp habitat, and the ocean habitat. And a habitat is just an environment that provides animals and plants with food, water, and a place to raise their babies. It's kind of like their home. The first habitat that we're going to review is the mountain habitat. It's the coldest habitat because it has the highest elevation. The higher up you go in elevation, the colder it becomes. It is also the um, section of our state that is the most, most north. So it's in the northern part of Georgia. The mountain habitat has ridges or peaks of mountains and it also has mountain valleys or the spaces in between the mountains. We have lots and lots of waterfalls in this habitat and there's about 80 inches of rainfall every single year in this habitat which makes it one of the wettest habitats that we have. The Blue Ridge Mountains are named for their color. These mountains are found in the mountain habitat. Oops. And let me move the screen. And its peaks and ridges are often, are often appear covered in a soft blue haze. So the mountains look very blue, and that's why we call them the Blue Ridge Mountains. Millions of years of erosion have rounded the mountains, or kind of made them a little flatter, and formed rich soils that grow thick forests of laurel trees, maple trees, and pine trees. In the mountain habitat, we have rich soil and sometimes rocky soil, depending exactly where you are in the habitat. So if you're actually on the mountain in the mountain habitat, that soil is going to be rocky, very rocky and not rich. If you're at the base of the mountain, then the soil is going to be very rich. Living in these forests of the mountain habitat are black bears, white-tailed deer, foxes, raccoons, possums, birds, salamanders, beavers, bobcats, and river trout. On Tuesday, you guys learned so many adaptations that black bears have. I hope you remember them. The next habitat is the Piedmont habitat. This is the habitat that we live in, so you should know the most about this habitat. Do we have mountains here in the Piedmont habitat? No, if you look outside your window, you will not see mountains. You will see low rolling hills, which means our land is fairly flat. We have forests, lakes, and rivers. We have warm temperatures and we have red clay soil. I bet if you go outside in your backyard and you dig a little bit, you'll be able to find some red clay. We also have pine trees, dogwood trees, with these beautiful white flowers. We have raccoons that sometimes like to get into our trash. Rattlesnakes and many, many types of birds, including the brown thrasher. Let's compare these two habitats that we just went over, the mountain habitat and the Piedmont habitat. So the mountain habitat has cold temperatures, but here in the Piedmont, we have a little bit warmer temperatures than the mountains. The mountain habitat has mountains, that makes sense, right? Mountain habitat has mountains. The Piedmont habitat does not have mountains. We have rolling hills. It's quite flat here. The mountain habitat has a lot of rainfall, about 80 inches per year. We do not have as much rainfall here in the Piedmont, although sometimes it may feel like we have a lot of rain. But by comparison, the mountains have so much more rain. In the mountain habitat, we can have rich soil or we can have rocky soil, depending on where you are at in the mountains. In the Piedmont habitat, we have red clay soil. Remember I said you can dig in your backyard and find some red clay. 
The mountain habitat is located in the very northern or upper part of our state in Georgia. The Piedmont habitat is where we live, so you should know where the Piedmont habitat is, but if you don't, it's in the upper middle section of Georgia. The next habitat is the coastal habitat. We have the upper coastal habitat and the lower coastal habitat. The lower coastal habitat is really close to the ocean. It's where the beaches are. So in the coastal habitat, we have sandy beaches, sandy loam soil. We also have a group of islands on our coast called the barrier islands. And these islands do an excellent job at protecting the mainland area of Georgia and they prevent erosion, land erosion, of our great state of Georgia. We also have sea oat plants. You can see a picture here in the corner. Sea oat plants, it kind of looks like grass, doesn't it? And these plants help prevent erosion of our coastline as well. Georgia's coastline is 110 miles long. This week we've been learning about how to measure length, and we've been learning about measuring inches, inches to the nearest half and quarter and whole inch. But an inch is about this big. A mile is so much bigger than an inch. So that means that our coast in Georgia is super big. And let's look at the pictures we have up here. Ooh, longleaf pine. So this sounds to me like another type of pine tree lives in the coastal habitat. Maybe not exactly like our pine trees that we can see outside of our windows. Ooh, this is a new tree. Live oak with Spanish moss. This tree is particularly found in the coastal habitat. You see this, um, this moss that's hanging from the tree? I think that's beautiful. You can only find these in the southern part of Georgia in our coastal habitat. Ooh, a crab and a gopher tortoise. The next habitat is the swamp and marsh habitat. The Okefenokee Swamp, that's fun to say, right? Okefenokee is the largest swamp in the United States. If you stomp on the ground, you can shake the trees. So the trees don't live in soil like trees live here in the Piedmont and in the mountain habitats. The trees, their roots go down into water. And same thing with plants, their roots go down into water. So those plants and trees don't really get their nutrients from the soil because they don't really have much soil to get their nutrients from. So plants in the swamp and marsh habitat in Georgia don't get their nutrients from soil. They get their nutrients by eating insects. There's a plant in Georgia called the pitcher plant it's kind of shaped like a pitcher or something that you use to pour liquids. And they eat insects that come along and fly and get trapped in their insect or in the, in the plant. And that's how they get their nutrients. Um, the swamp habitat is a wet and hot environment. Some trees and uh, animal examples that you can find in the swamp habitat are found at the bottom of this slide. So the tupelo tree, the water moccasin, the American alligator, and the green tree frog are all found in the swamp habitat. I bet you there's tons of snakes in this habitat that like to swim. Oh, one thing before I go on to the next slide. You see the bird up here in the swamp and marsh habitat? Birds in the swamp in marsh habitat in Georgia have very long legs because the water is very shallow so they can walk in the water easier. The last habitat that we have here in Georgia is called the ocean habitat. This habitat has no land. All these animals live in water. So think of fish, sea turtles, coral reefs, whales, anything that you can think of that lives in the Atlantic Ocean right off of our coast lives in this habitat. 
So the ocean habitat, we can see here, is a salt water habitat. That means there's lots and lots of salt in the water. The animals and plants that we can find in this habitat are shrimp, sea turtles, sea stars, redfish, lobster, flounder, which is just a type of fish, trout, another type of fish, seaweed, seagrass, and algae. Many animals migrate to this habitat to give birth. And we learned last week that migrate is when one animal goes from one habitat and flies, swims, or walks to another habitat. The Atlantic Ocean near Georgia is warmer than most oceans in the world. Wow, so here in Georgia, our ocean, our Atlantic Ocean, that's right off our coast, is super warm. Now we're gonna um, go into our, the second half of our review. And we're gonna um, talk about the adaptations that we've learned all about. Um, so adaptations are special traits or behaviors that help living things survive or stay alive. So this means that adaptations are parts of plants and animals that are good, that are helpful. So adaptations can be plant or animal parts, or they can be behaviors. We learned on Tuesday with Ms. Stevens that black bears have so many different adaptations. They have adapted in their mountain habitats to hibernate, which is a behavior that the bear does, or sleep during winter. And they have the adaptation of really long fur to keep themselves warm. The pitcher plant, this plant that I talked about earlier, has adapted in the swamp habitat of Georgia to not get its nutrients from the soil, to get its nutrients from insects that it traps. Mimicry is our first type of adaptation. Mimicry is when an animal or plant looks like another animal or plant that is dangerous or poisonous. So we have two examples on our slides. The first one is the scarlet king snake. This is not poisonous, but it has adapted to look like this snake that actually is poisonous. And you know what, boys and girls? That helps the snake avoid getting eaten. The second example that we have on this slide is a moth. The moth has adapted to look like the eyes of an owl, and this helps it avoid getting eaten as well. Our second um, adaptation is hibernation. Whew. Oh, sorry. Animals spending the winter in a deep sleep. That's what hibernation is. Animals that sleep in the winter because there's not a lot of food in the winter. Lots of plants lose their leaves. There's not a lot of berries for bears to eat. So bats hibernate bears hibernate, but a lot of y'all wondered, do bears migrate? No, bears do not migrate, they just hibernate. I know those words sound very similar. So migration, migration, we've already talked about, is when an animal moves from one habitat to another for a certain purpose, and then they go back home. So on this map, we have several examples of animals that have migrated. We can see that monarch butterflies migrate, whales migrate, gorillas, um, certain types of birds and elephants. All of these things migrate. But do all animals migrate? Nope, because not all animals need to. The next and final adaptation that we learned about that you need to know for your test is camouflage. And camouflage helps animals to blend into their environment. So if you take a look at this picture, you can see two frogs. But if I was another type of animal looking at this frog from maybe a further distance away, I would have trouble seeing this frog. And that frog, I probably wouldn't be able to see and I would be missing out on my lunch. And this moth over here on the right, has adapted to its environment, and it uses camouflage to be able to blend in and avoid getting eaten. So if you came to the Zoom session this morning, then you were able to have a lot of fun with me, and you were able to do an interactive quiz. If you did not come to the Zoom session, then start coming to it, because you're going to be able to have a lot more fun 
with being able to ask me questions live and with doing a few more interactive things. So good luck with studying and doing your best on your test tomorrow. Bye guys.